The WASC single hole flow stopping system is a natural extension to the range and works with existing WASC T-set and ancillary equipment in the field. Before starting any work, ensure you follow any health and safety guidelines and risk assessments for your area. WASC new single hole flow stopping equipment means that gas repairs can be made quicker and easier by utilising dual bags through a single hole, thereby reducing entry points and equipment required for operation. In addition, the excavation footprint reduced by up to 30%, which delivers cost savings for the client and environmental benefits, as less waste material will end up in landfill. Moreover, single hole flow stopping system is aligned with RIO, a mandatory framework established by the official regulator of GEM, which provides attractive financial incentives for contractors. The WASC single hole bagging kit is specifically designed for use with WASC T-set bases, both earlier Mark I and latest Mark II types, and in conjunction with WASC bypass equipment. It must not be used for any other application, and if the equipment shows signs of damage which could cause personal injury or affect the flow stopping procedure, if you have any doubt, replace it. Method of working, using WASC single hole bagging equipment. Select the correct size of bag for your main size. You'll require five bags for setting up a two-way stop. Ensure that the O-ring is present in the bag connector and is located in the bottom of the thread. At this stage, check the bag use by date and general condition. If you have any doubt, replace it. With the bag tube in a horizontal orientation and with the inflation rod thread exposed, attach the bag. Use a 16 AF open spanner to tighten to a stop. The natural curvature of the spine of the bag requires alignment with the direction indicator. With the bag tube laid horizontal and the inflation tube at its lowest position, the direction indicator needs to point vertically for the correct launch position. Using an air pump connected to the control head, inflate the bag to 0.2 bar, 3 psi at a maximum. Close the valve. Inspect the bag for damage, i.e. loose thread, tear, oil contamination, etc. Hold on test for five minutes. If you've any doubt, replace it. Remove the air pump and open the valve to deflate the bag. Withdraw the bag into the bag tube and remove the control head. Repeat for each bag to be used. Four bag tubes are required for the flow stop and one for emergency use if required. Assemble the bagging head starting with the bag canopy. Loosen the canopy clamp wing nut and slide the valve body tube first into the canopy to a stop. Retighten hand tight. Select the appropriate nose for the main size. Align the tongue to the cutout located on the valve body tube. Attach the nose assembly by screwing the bag nut clockwise and engage the tongue continuing to a dead stop. Hand tight is sufficient to secure in place. Stand the assembly vertically with the nose contacting the ground. Unclamp the bag canopy and slide it downwards until it contacts the ground covering the nose. At one of the bagging positions on the main, locate the bag canopy into the base. Rotate clockwise to engage bayonets. On Mark II bases, turn the vent lock handle to secure in position. Select one of the upper bag tubes and attach a control head to the inflation tube. Ensure valve is open. Present the bayonet end of the bag tube to the valve body and insert it into the recess. With the vent lock handle in the open position, Rotate the bag tube clockwise to a stop and then rotate the handle clockwise to lock the tube in position. Note the indication on the handle. Repeat steps for each bagging head required for the flow stop operation. Setting up and commissioning the bypass. Ensure that the pressure gauges or recorders are working and fitted correctly, showing current pressure in the main. Open the vent valve on the downstream side of the bypass. 
slowly open the upstream bypass gate valve on the bag stop base and allow gas to vent out of the bypass at the downstream vent position. Confirm two consecutive readings of greater than 90% GIA and close the vent valve. Close the upstream bypass gate valve, open the upstream bypass vent and slowly open the downstream bypass gate valve. Confirm two consecutive readings of greater than 90% GIA from the vent and close the upstream bypass vent. Reopen the upstream bypass gate valve. Any joint not included in a pressure test must be checked using leak detection fluid once the bypass has been commissioned. The bypass is now commissioned. An additional vent point is required when using the WASC system, which should be located within the section of main to be cut. An additional base, undercarriages and securing chains are supplied. Locate the vent head into the base. Rotate clockwise to engage bare nets. On Mark II bases, turn the vent lock handle to secure in position. Attach a vent stack to the head. Ensure that the one inch vent valve on the canopy is in the closed position. Loosen the canopy wing nut clamp and insert the bag tube assembly into the main to a stop. Rotate the bag tube assembly to align the upper bag tubes with the axis of the main. Reclamp. Repeat steps for each bagging head position. The insertion of the bags must be done in a controlled manner and in the correct sequence. Use the launch handle, which can be mounted onto the appropriate direction indicator. Insert the upstream secondary bag number one. The bag will be facing the cutout section. Inflate the bag gradually to the required pressure. Close control head valve. Insert the downstream secondary bag number two. The bag will be facing the cutout section. Inflate to the required pressure. Close control head valve. Vent the space between the two bags by opening the valve on the center vent stack. This is to check that an adequate seal between the bags has been achieved. With an acceptable seal being established, insert downstream primary bag number three, inflating to the required pressure. Open the vent valve on the downstream bag head and check that there's an acceptable seal between bag number two and number three. With an acceptable seal being established, insert upstream primary bag number four, inflating to the required pressure. Open the vent valve on the upstream bag head and check there's an acceptable seal between bag number one and number four. If the gas passing is excessive, then the vent must be closed and primary bag reseated. Both bag head vents must remain open and monitored for the duration. Bag failure and replacement. In the event of a bag failure, normally observed by the decrease in bag pressure indicated on the individual bag pressure gauge and possible increased flow of gas from the relevant vent stack. If the bag cannot be reinflated, it will be necessary to replace it. If either of the primary bags is to be replaced, shut off the relevant vent to stop full mains pressure being released. If either of the secondary bags are to be replaced, it may be necessary to shut off one of the vents, i.e. the relevant bag canopy vent, and then withdraw the failed bag by raising the relevant inflation tube, which should be fully retracted to a stop. Take care not to disturb the other inflation tube, Hold down if required. Remove the dirt seal from its recess in the body. This will allow access for the spatula, which can now be inserted to isolate the appropriate upper bag tube, sliding it fully into the sealing slot. Note, use a suitable lubricant on the spatula to aid insertion. Rotate the vent lock handle anti-clockwise to vent the upper bag tube. With the vent lock handle open, rotate the bag tube anti-clockwise to disengage it from the bagging head and remove complete with bag and control handle. Place to one side for investigation later. Use the 41 AF open spanner provided to aid removal if required. With the vent lock handle open, insert the replacement bag tube.
and rotate it clockwise to a stop. Close the valve to lock in position. Remove the spatula from the sealing slot. Replace the body seal. Launch the replacement bag into the main and inflate as before. Reopen the relevant vent valves and monitor pressures and vent stacks. When conditions have stabilized, continue operations. WASC is a brand you can rely on to deliver safe, innovative, reliable and cost-effective solutions for the gas industry. WASC strongly recommends that only genuine WASC spares and assemblies are used in the servicing and repair of WASC equipment.